Hi everyone. My name is Michelle and I am on week 13 of chemotherapy to fight metastatic triple negative breast cancer. I am using the carnivore diet as one of my main components of my fight against cancer and also my fight against chemotherapy and uh, the side effects that come with it. So my first 12 treatments were um, carboplatin and um, paclitaxel. And this one today was my first treatment with the new medications. And so we started with pre-meds. There was a difference there too. And so I'll just run down this for those of you following along week to week. Um, my pre-meds were Benadryl, um, Aloxy, which is anti-nausea, dexamethasone, which is a steroid and also has an anti-nausea component. And then instead of the uh, Pepsid, we had a, a, a drug called EMEND, E-M-E-N-D, and that was actually a half hour infusion. And that was the pre-medication before we started the regular treatment. We also had Keytruda today, which is our immunotherapy and then we had adriamycin which is doxorubicin which is the red devil that today was the first day of that and cytoxin was the second chemo med so um adriamycin they actually um push that they sit with you and push that the nurse does so uh, that's not a drip infusion like everything else and um, it took about a half hour, I would say. So the pre-med was a half hour, the Keytruda was a half hour, the Adriamycin was about a half hour, I would say, and then the um, Cytoxin was a half hour regular IV drip um, infusion. I took some video, and so I'll probably put that here, of um, them accessing the port. I thought that might be interesting. So, oh, I actually have a little band-aid on it still um so I'll because my husband was with me so I was able to have him hold the camera and video that so we'll probably post that here So that was accessing my port. So, uh, and then after that, I had all the meds I mentioned before, the pre-meds, then the Keytruda, and then the Adriamycin, and then the Cytoxin. And then I had to wait um, 
because they told me they were placing a new Lasta um, injector on me to, so that I would get an injection after 27 hours. And um, I didn't know anything about that. The doctors didn't mention that before. So I questioned that. I asked them all kinds of questions about what is that? Is it necessary? Are you sure? Because the doctors usually tell me everything. They know that I don't like new meds. Um, and so they had the uh, pharmacist actually come in and sit and talk with me for, she was there for probably a half hour or two, just talking and explaining that it helps my body make new white blood cells because the adriamycin is going to tank my immune system. And so um, I have this, hold on. Sorry, I couldn't take my arm out of the sleeve while I did that, but I have this little um, device on me and that will give me an injection of the new Lasta after 27 hours, which again, it's a, this is not something I typically would have just said yes to. I didn't just say yes to it. I asked all kinds of questions and they came and sat with me and went through the potential side effects and went through the, um, a potential reactions that I, you know, I could potentially have and, um, and then the benefits. And, um, I was comfortable with everything she said enough to agree to have this inject. My other option was to come back tomorrow and have them do an injection in person. Um, I mean, I suppose I could have just flat out refused, but, um, I didn't, I want to go to my daughter's hockey games when I feel up to it. I want to go out in public and I guess um, the benefits outweighed the risks for now. <laughs> and we'll see. And then they told me what to watch for as far as, as, far as any reactions or anything. Um, so that's going to um, do an injection. So it's already um, attached as you can see. So the needle has pierced the skin and there's a cannula in the skin and the medicine is in that device and it will be infused over a half hour to 45 minute period of time after the 27 hours. It'll beep and tell me that it's going to start the infusion. And then if I have any kind of side effects at all, I just rip it off and call my doctor or call 911 if it's a bad reaction, but um, they don't anticipate that. They said it's extremely rare. The pharmacist said she doesn't think anyone's ever had a reaction to it that she, on her patients. So we'll see. So that's um, one more drug added to my list. And I hate adding drugs to my list. I really do. But this is temporary. And I signed up for this. And as somebody, uh, my friend Jennifer posted on my Facebook page today, it's the blood of Christ. He's always with us. And so um, he's not going to leave us. And I believe that. And I know I'm going to get through this and this is temporary. And when I get to the other side, we can fix everything. <laughs> we can um, get rid of the uh, neuropathy in my hands, which is much better than it was. For those of you who saw my little short update last week, I did get neuropathy after my very last Taxil treatment. Um, I did not use the ice gloves, uh, the ice mittens and booties today. Um, I talked to the doctor about it and because I have neuropathy in my hands, they do, because it's already there, they actually do not recommend putting your hands in ice because ice can make neuropathy much worse once it's there, even though ice can prevent the neuropathy from happening in the first place once you have it. And I do still have some sensate some tenderness. It basically feels like, well, the first day it felt like I was, anytime I touched anything, it felt like I was touching a hot stove. But now it's a, it's a, it's the same sensation, but a lot less intense. So it's, it doesn't feel like I'm touching a hot stove. It feels like I'm touching uh, a stove that's almost too hot <laughs> or uh, t testing bath water that's maybe a little bit too hot. And so you get that little afterburn. That's kind of what my fingertips feel like. And it is um, pretty much all of my fingertips at this point. The, the first day it was just like these three, I think were the first three. And then uh, over that course of that evening, it went to all of my fingers and it was, um, it was quite painful took Advil 
and it uh, and went to sleep and then when I woke up the next morning it was better so that's all much better obviously I feel okay still I don't feel I don't I'm not feeling the effects of this um, these drugs yet um, and so we'll see what tomorrow brings my goal is to not take the steroids if I can avoid them oh yes and I forgot to mention they sent me home with prescriptions for oral dexamethasone steroids and um, something else because I protested. I protested the oral steroids because when I took the oral steroids as a pre-medicine, I did not sleep at all that night and didn't really even sleep the next night. It was very broken. So I kind of protested when she said she was sending me home with oral dexamethasone. So she gave me two prescriptions. One was for dexamethasone and she said to take it in the morning and the other was at night and I can't remember what it was but it's um more of a sedative effect um lorazepam it's a benzodiazepine so um addicting drug but she said that if um if I'm experiencing nausea which she said I will <laughs> then I can take the Zofran also, the Zofran I already have. I have Compazine, I have Zofran that they prescribed one and then the other early on, um, which I haven't have needed to take with the prior chemos. But now on this, on Adriamycin, they said that it's going to affect me. So they gave me these medications to have at home. And I'm not actually sure if I start taking them kind of prophylactically or do I wait? So I actually sent my doctor a message to find out, do I need to, do I wait until I'm nauseated? Do I take the Zofran first and if it doesn't work, take these? Or do I just, um, you know, start tomorrow morning with that? Um, I don't want to take the dexamethasone if I can avoid it. I don't want to at all. Like it's, I'm not a fan. <laughs> just, you can see the even the injection that I got, you can kind of see how puffy I am. Um, and that bothers me. <laughs> My eyelids are puffy. Um, so I don't want to add to that. So what are you gonna do? Oh, and the other thing with the neuropathy, just so, um, cause I didn't do an update after this, but with the neuropathy, I took the Advil the first night and it, um, it kind of stopped the throbbing pain and it was a little bit better, but it wasn't gone. I actually went for acupuncture and a chiropractic adjustment and that's when it really kind of turned the corner and got really super mild. There is some, like I said, there's some sensation there, but it's really, really mild at this point. So I wanted to add that as well. The naturopath who does my acupuncture also gave me a homeopathic that I was taking for several days. I have been taking for several days. I can't remember what it's called. I'd have to look at the vial. It's it's got three called cap kelp. Mm, I don't remember. I'll maybe I'll put it in the description. Um, so there was a homeopathic remedy. There also was um, an acupuncture session and a chiropractic adjustment. Um, and um, also some Rokasa nerve cream. I was putting that on it as well. Um, so there's, there's, there were a few other alternative therapies that helped with getting the neuropathy to really subside to a point where it is not inhibiting any of my activities. So that's that. <laughs> I wanted to mention that. It wasn't just the Advil. Um, there were some other things as well. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Hey everyone. So I, uh, last night after I filmed the rest of this video, uh, started to feel really nauseated. And so I did, uh, stop filming. <laughs> I took a Zofran. Um, I drank some of my water with element electrolytes in it and the raw unflavored element. Um, also had a Zevia ginger ale, which is zero calorie. It's sweetened with stevia leaf extract and um, in a lot of ice, basically. So it was diluted anyway and uh, sipped on that a little bit. And I did feel better between the Zofran and the fluids. Um, slept kind of broken last night 
And um, and then this morning I did see that there was a message from the APRN I met with yesterday who said that she did want me to take the dexamethasone in the morning with food, which I'm not hungry at all, uh, but I'm not really nauseated. So I did take that uh, 7 a.m. this morning. I took my normal morning um, meds, which is minocycline and um, pantoprazole. Um, that I take every morning and then I took the dexamethasone reluctantly this morning as well we'll see how the day goes if I do not experience any nausea today um, I may try and skip it tomorrow just to see if it really makes a difference um, I believe I only take it I have to ask her um, a response question is do I, I I think I only take it for three days that's all she wants me to take it for uh, that's what both my husband and I remember from the appointment yesterday. So that's, if 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 I don't just stop earlier, that's the plan, I believe, but I'll wait to hear what her response is. So we'll see about that. Um, again, my sleep was very broken. Hi, a few more things. I uh, got the um, homeopathic remedy that the um, naturopath had prescribed to help with neuropathy, and it's Hepar sulfurous calcarium and the nerve pain salve from Rocasa, which I used for several days as well to help with the neuropathy. And I wanted to show you those and I'll put the links to those in the description as well. So we'll see how the rest of the day today goes, how I feel, how I sleep tonight. And then, um, you know, I'm sure I'll probably post another update after a few days, uh, or maybe sooner, <laughs> who knows, <laughs> to keep you all apprised uh, how I'm doing with the Red Devil. So have a great day. It's sunny out here in Connecticut. I'm going to try and go for a walk, even a short one. Um, we'll see. <laughs> That's my plan. Have a great day.